Thank you very much. If you have your Bibles, I, uh, I really, I, I told Chad I've got two messages today that I want to bring. I'm going to preach this one this morning and then start tonight on a message I hope every one of you will come back for. It'll probably extend into Wednesday and maybe the following week because it'll be a short series on the need of this country. But today I want to talk about a subject, and I want you to look at it with me in First John chapter number 3. Behold, in verse number 1, behold what uh, manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for he, for we shall see him as he is. Now notice verse 3, our text. Yeah. And every man that hath, notice, this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Amen. Every Sunday, as I stand up in this pulpit, I sometimes look back and I see some of you as if you came into the church kind of hopeless, feeling that there's an issue or a problem or a situation that you're in this morning and you feel like there's absolutely no hope for it. This week, I guess what touched me so much about the event in Texas was the faces of those people. I remember two of them stood up saying their children was missing, not knowing that they were in the room dead. And I looked at their face, Brother Rich, and there was just so much emptiness and so much hopelessness. And I want you to know Another day passes another suicide. Another day passes another marriage broken up. Another day passes people uh, trying to find hope and trying to get delivered from addictions. Marriages trying to find some kind of stability. People struggle with religion, and I want all you to know you're not going to find hope in religion. Amen. You're not going to find hope in the bottle. Right. You might say, well, it eases me for a little while and it calms me down some. You're not going to find hope in the next needle. You're not going to find hope in religious establishments. You're not going to find hope in Hollywood. Amen. You're not going to find hope by making a trip to Mecca. Right. You're not going to find hope in Mohammed or Buddha. Or some religious leader. You're not even going to find hope in me or this church. But ladies and gentlemen, there is hope. And it's called this hope. Amen. If you're looking for hope this morning, you're not going to find it in education. You're not going to find it in location. You're not going to find it in destination. You're not going to find it in the pundits. The politics of the day. For God's sake, I was thinking this week, could, could maybe a Democrat and a Republican get some sense? Amen. And forget about party loyalties and think about solutions. And I want to tell them all, it's not found in them. It's found in a need for us to find this hope. A need for us to get back to God. A need for us to find hope in him. You're not going to find hope in anything else but the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. 
My hope is found in nothing less save Jesus and his righteousness. I don't want to preach on some kind of hope. I don't want to preach on a hope. But this morning, for the minutes I have, I want to preach on this hope. Well, glory. See, here's what you think is, we think sometimes hope is, is crossing our fingers. That's the sign of this world's hope. Or making a wish. But no, ladies and gentlemen, the real hope I'm talking about, the Greek word means an anticipation. Amen. It means a confidence. Right. It means an unwavering standing on the faith that we have in Christ Jesus. It means that we are trusting everything that we have in our creator, in the one that we live and move and have our being. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to find out that we don't have the solutions, but he does. Some try to find hope today and figure it's hopeless tomorrow. You can't find hope in your bank account. There's no hope in the stock market. Your hope can't be found in pure religion. But I want you to know there's something happened at the cross, the death, the burial. And the resurrection of Christ, that is our hope. That's where we stand at this morning as a body of believers. We're standing on that hope and only that hope. Let me, if I can, I'm just overwhelmed this morning. Let me give you three things. I just go line upon line and precept upon precept about this hope. It's, it's, it's beyond anything you could imagine. Number one, look at verse number one. We have an awesome position. How many believers in this room? How many believers are in the room? Raise your hand if you're, a, you're saved and you're a believer. I want you to know something. We have an awesome position. Notice what it says. Behold what manner of love now notice this phrase, the Father. It's based on an initiating creator, the Father. In the Old Testament, the term the Father is not as much mentioned as it is in the New Testament. Through the Holy Spirit and the provision of Jesus Christ, we have, somebody help me, access Amen. to the Father. Amen. I am glad this morning that he's my Father. Yes, he's not the big daddy upstairs. He's not a figment of my imagination. He is the Father. He is sovereign. He is in control. He is the one that we need to trust in. We may not be able to trace him, but we can trust him. And though he slay me, yet will I trust him this morning then the incredible compassion well this whoo this would be oh what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon us incredible that word what manner really from the Greek chant it means from what country the, the hope we got the love that we experience it's not the love of a friend toward a friend, a mother to a daughter, a son to a dad. No, no, no. It is from another sort. The one that loved you and died for you and gave his life for you. It came from another country. It came from heaven itself. I'm glad that God loves me. He loves me when I'm up and he loves me when I'm down. He loves me when I'm in and he loves me when I'm out. He loves this nation even though we have flaws. He loves those people in Texas this morning even though, though they're hurting. I'm glad I got a God that loves me. 
<laughs> it's eternal love. It's unconditional love. Aren't you glad? Boy, can I take a second? That he looked beyond your faults and saw your needs. I want to tell you, I'm going to be real transparent. I'm a mess. And we're all a mess. Yet there is a thrice holy God who gives us the eternal, amazing, great, marvelous, sacrificial, exclusive love for me and for you. And he loves us all like we were his only children. Woo! I can park right there this morning with all the hate that's in our world. The first discussion when that thing happened. Well, we should outlaw this or we should outlaw that. Can I give them a suggestion? Instead of you saying, I want to outlaw this or outlaw this, how about our leaders, how about our nation get back on our knees again and ask God for hope, ask God for solutions, ask God to help us. Instead of us grappling around and hating one another, this nation is more divided now than it's ever been, and that's a shame. My Democratic brothers, my Republican brothers, you said, aren't you either one? No, I'm not. Amen. I'm not a fillet. Right. Can I say to you, that's not your hope. Amen. They can't legislate hope. Amen. Hope comes from God. Amen. Hope comes from the Savior. Hope comes from his love. Amen. Oh, glory. Then I see an indescribable calling. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. Listen to this. That we should be called the sons of God. Whoa! You said, I'm glad to be American. I am too. But I want all you to know, I'm more enamored. I'm more in love with the thought of not, not being American, but being a child of God, being an heir of God, being a joint heir with Jesus Christ this morning. I am God's son. I am, I thank God I am his child. Woo! She said, what do you mean, preacher? We was on our way to hell, now we're on our way to heaven. We were hopeless, but we now have hope has family identity, then family inheritance. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm a part of the family. Amen. Amen. I was glad you're part. Amen. I started to have another song this morning. I didn't want to throw chant for a loop. I'm so glad yes, I'm a part of the family of God. Amen. I'm glad there was a day when I was a young boy and I saw myself a sinner and I repented of my sin and I trusted the only hope possible and he grafted me in. He adopted me in and I'm a son of God this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the inevitable consequence, listen to this. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Listen to this, inevitable consequence. Therefore the world knoweth us not. I guess what really broke me down this week, and I sure won't say what was said, when people were called to pray, certain leaders said a filthy word about prayer. Amen. And I would never say that word out of my lips, but I know some of you probably heard it. I want him to know and her to know that their only hope is God. Amen. And you know, here's the problem. You know what the problem is? 
The world doesn't understand at all what we have. They don't understand at all the love that's in our hearts. They don't understand at all the transforming power of God. They don't understand at all what the gospel of Christ can do for an individual. Amen. Whew, glory. Am I helping you? Amen. Then I see a Christ of identification. The world knoweth us not. Because they knew him not. The Bible said they hated him without a cause. I guess what breaks my heart about this world and our country is just so much hate. It's ridiculous. A God that created us all. And even it, it even gets into the church. It gets in the families. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's ever a time that we as church members need to love one another, if there's ever a time that you family members need to grip on, and you might have a difference, and you may even have a difference with me, but ladies and gentlemen, we're children of God, we're family of God, we ought to love one another. Amen. Secondly, oh Lordy, I got to move. Look at verse number two. We have an awesome position, but number two, I love this. We have an assured promise. Look what it says. Beloved, <laughs> somebody, would the church do this for me? Now. Would everybody say now? Now. <laughs> Beloved, would you do it one more time? I like that. Say it. Now. Listen to this. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Or we shall see him as he is. Amen. What can you say about that word now? Well, I'm saved now. Amen. I'm redeemed now. I'm washed now. I'm born again now. I'm a child of God now. I'm alive in Christ now. Heaven is my home now. If you don't believe in eternal security, somebody got you and fooled you. Ladies and gentlemen, that right there teaches eternal security. We're saved now. Not because of our practice not because of how good we are, but because of the foundation of the hope we have in Christ. Amen. We have a convicted presence now. And then we got a current puzzling. Look at it. This right here amazes me. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you, I think about heaven, and I think about what I'm going to be like, and I'm going to be honest with you, I know some scripture, but it puzzles me. I don't know what I'm going to be like. I have one of my buddies said, well, we're all going to be 33 and a half years old and look like Jesus. Well, I don't believe that, but I do know we're going to be known as we know him. How <laughs> somebody, Whoa! <laughs> They're going to be, <laughs> oh, I'm about to get happy. <laughs> then a confident prospect. I don't know what I'll be, <laughs> but listen to this. <laughs> and it does not appear uh, what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear. <laughs> I tell you what, <laughs> I've been thinking about that mansion four square. <laughs> That, that, that city of God. <laughs> I've been thinking about them streets of gold or the street of gold. And I've been thinking about the marriage supper. I don't know what's going to be, but I do know one thing. I'm like Hyman and Appleman. They won't say grace till I get there. <laughs> I don't know what the millennials going to be right like. I, I studied with Josh this week about the tree of life. That thing amazes me. And I'll give y'all a good question. I, I still don't know the answer. Chad does, but I don't. There's a tree of life up there. The drills makes fruit every month. 
and the leaves are filled with healing of the nations. I don't really know what that means. Maybe it means the millennial nations. I don't know. But I do know this. We want healing in this land. We want healing and hope in this land. It ain't going to come from us. But by the Bible said, but by with his stripes, we are healed. And then there's a coming person. He, <laughs> look here. When he shall appear, I want y'all to look at me. And I don't want you to miss this. If you in your right mind can see everything, is ha- the things that are happening right now should be happening during the tribulation. And we're going out before the tribulation. My, my hope is a blessed hope. And the soon appearing of our great God and Savior. I really believe <laughs> whoever's going to blow that trumpet has got him right up there to his lips. <laughs> He's got it right there. <laughs> And I want you to know it's going to blow soon. And there'll be no more child abuse. And there'll be no more killings. And there'll be no more school killings. And there'll be no more hurt. And every tear is going to be wiped away. Somebody help me. You can't manufacture it. You can't buy it. But it's a free gift of God this morning. Well, let me just do it. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Woo! Can you think of a time when there'll be no more unrest? There'll be another, not another terrorist. Won't be another sick individual that takes an innocent life. <laughs> I don't know when, and I don't know where, how, and how even, but I do know he's coming. And then, oh, I got to hurry. And then I see a clear perception. We'll see him as he is. Listen to this. John saw him as he was. He saw him when he healed the blind. He saw him when he put spit on clay and put it on people's eyes. They could see. He saw him take a lad's lunch and feed 5,000. He, he saw him uh, uh, sweat, with sweat like blood. He saw him walk up Calvary's hill. He saw him go in a tomb, but on the third day came out. Yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, when he's coming back, he's not coming back as a lamb. No, he's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's coming back with a sword that proceedeth out of his mouth, which is the word of God. And he'll destroy the enemies of God and rule and reign a thousand years on this earth. And we get to rule and reign with him. Somebody help me. That's this hope. Yes, sir. I'm done. Verse three. I'll just hit this and we'll move. We have an awesome position, Chad. We have a shearing promise. But look at verse 3. We have an absolute product. And every man that hath this hope in him. Can I ask again? How many of you got this hope in you? Wave at me. That's an individual resolve. I have this hope in me, listen. Purifies himself, even as he is pure. Not only do I have an individual resolve, I have an inward residence. He lives in us. Dear God, if he lives in us, how many believe it ought to make us act differently? Somebody help me. Why do we live so foolishly? Why we sometimes folks think we're little figs? Am I preaching? We got him in us, and it ought to bring an instinctive righteousness. We should be pure, even as he is pure. 
You know what we ought to do? We ought to live, to, since we're going to heaven one day, we ought to live today as if we're going. Yeah. Hey, you don't, need, you don't need booze to give you a jump. You, you, don't, you don't need that. You, you don't need some outside force. Hey, we need to be pure. Amen. Holy. Amen. Why? Because he's in us. We got a hope. We're not, not to be like the world. Right. And we got an impeccable role model. You know, I, Chad and I went to vacation this week. And I, I enjoyed it. I, I love Chad and I love Rachel. And Chad, I watched you this week, your, your kids, and Rachel, they, they're, they're great role models, those kids. Uh, one of the kids looked at me, and evidently I said something that was unlawful in their teaching. <laughs> I think I probably called somebody stupid on TV or something, and Noah said, no. <laughs> and I asked Chad, I said, I repent, what is it? <laughs> But ladies and gentlemen, we all can be role models, but we have an impeccable role model. Amen. We're pure like he's pure. We ought to be like him, or we ought to be striving to be like him. Amen. 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 Heads bowed, eyes closed. When I asked a little while ago, and I wonder this morning, how many people in this room, you're saved, but you've got big problems, and they're bigger than you are, and you kind of feel like they're hopeless, but you'd like, you'd like for me to pray for you this morning. How many Christians just slip up your hand and say, I've got some stuff that's a mess in my life? I see it. Will you do me a favor? Would you slip out of your seat and come up around the altar? Just, just do that. Just slip out and stand with me, please. Just slip out and find a place to pray. There's folks already here. Just slip out. But if you're here right now and you've never been saved, I mean right now you've never been saved and you want that hope. You know this world's in trouble and you want that hope. It's in Christ. It's in the gospel. I mean right now just slip up your hand and say, Preacher Smith, I'm not a Christian, but I need to be I know I do. I put it off for years. My mom and dad taught me, I know what's right. Preacher Smith, pray for me. Slip your hand up. Just slip it up. God bless that hand. Somebody else. Just slip it up. I pray right now. Those folks, you've been under my preaching for months. You haven't made a decision yet. I pray this morning. Come to him. Not me. Not the church. To him. And trust him this morning. I'm going to pray our Father. As folks are coming to the altar, as needs are being met, God, may we realize this hope, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you coming?